I've been doing videos on Luminar AI for a while now, and one of the things I've noticed in the comments are there are a lot of people who want to know how to do things that they can't find to do inside of Luminar AI. And that's because Luminar AI doesn't do those things. So if you're wanting something that the tool doesn't do, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you five reasons for people who should not buy Luminar AI. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. Why don't we go ahead and take a look inside? The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that there are no selections inside of Luminar AI. So let's bring up a photograph here and let's say I want to cut this person out and put her on another background. Can't do it. There's not a single tool over here. We go into edit. We can go into the tools. Nothing over here says selection. You have some local adjustments and masks, but that presents a problem of its own. But Basically, if you need on a regular basis to go in and cut out subjects and put them into another photograph, another background, Luminar AI doesn't do it. You're going to need Photoshop for that. Number two, there are no layers inside of Luminar AI. Luminar 4 and previous versions had layers. Skylum and the developers made a decision with Luminar AI that they would not use layers. That's upset quite a few people. Their strategy and their workflow require layers. There are other tools that don't have layers. Lightroom, for example, does not use layers. Doesn't mean you can't make a nice photograph without layers, but if you absolutely insist on layers, avoid Luminar AI. It's not the tool for you. If you need fine edge masking, we mentioned that there's no selections in here, so maybe you're thinking, all right, I can just build a mask. No, not really a detailed one. So let me give you an example. We'll go over here to local masking. We'll go on basic. And a lot of the tools also have masks built into them. And there's three kinds of masks that you have. There's a paint mask, there's a radial mask, and there's a gradient mask. None of these are meant for fine tuning. So for example, if I wanna come over here with a paint mask, I can choose my radius. And you see those two circles? Well, the softness is what the inner circle is. So as I move this over, I can make a very hard edge brush. And let's say that I want to mask this person out. Well, I can take the eraser, I can maybe make a bigger mask, and it's very easy to get the outside edges and just kind of remove that. The problem comes when I need to get over here into fine detail, and you end up with a very, very small brush trying to zoom in and do masking almost on a pixel level to say, I'm cutting out everything in the background. And then you've got to worry, like, did I cut out something that's on the skin of the person or part of the subject that you're after? Or did I get the background? And then you can go wipe out all the other stuff. It'll be very painstaking, very detailed, tedious, and time-consuming. If you had Photoshop, you could go in, open the thing up, click a selection brush, and then click select subject, and you're done. It's much faster in Photoshop than it is in Luminar AI, and it's not really supposed to happen inside of Luminar AI. So if you're looking for fine edge masking or like the range mask inside of Lightroom, it doesn't exist here. So if that's what you need, don't buy Luminar AI. Something else that people are thinking is they're going to get rid of their Adobe subscription so they don't have Lightroom, they don't have Photoshop, and they don't pay $10 a month to get it. But then you find out that managing photos inside of Luminar AI is not quite as robust. Look, there's places that you can put your photos in here and you can build little folders, you can build albums, and that's it. If you need to manage metadata, if you need to update keywords and tags, if you need to manage other metadata inside of your photograph, there's simply nothing here for you to use. It does not manage your metadata, so don't have the expectation that it will. If that's something you need, and I agree that most photographers do need that to keep organized, then don't buy Luminar AI, at least not for that purpose. And finally, there are no complex edits. So what do I mean by complex edits? Basically, if you've got this long, arcane, very detailed, craftsman-like technique that you use in Photoshop and you want to replicate it here, that's not what this tool is for. This is a tool for people to get in and get out. And there are wonderful tools inside of Luminar AI that can do a lot of the things that perhaps you used to do, but they do it in a different way. And if you like the results, that's great. If you like the process, then Luminar AI isn't really for you. The process inside of Luminar AI really starts off with templates and taking a look at what's built in is kind of like recipes for you. You can also build your own templates and get your own looks. 
there are a number of wonderful tools that you can use. But if you're someone who has this process laid out that you're going to go through and you're going to put in eyelashes on somebody, then this is not the tool for you. It wasn't designed to work that way. Here's a bonus for you. Don't buy Luminar AI if you have not looked at the minimum requirements. One of the things I've heard are some complaints about performance. And then when I go find out they don't have a current system or they don't have a system that meets the minimum requirements of Luminar AI. Keep in mind, minimum requirements means minimum performance. It does take a bit more horsepower than Luminar 4. So if you've got an older system and you're not thinking about upgrading sometime, check out the system requirements for Luminar AI. It is not the fault of the program if you don't have a computer that's capable of running it. So who should get Luminar AI? Well, really that comes down to people who need to prepare a photograph to look nice and use it somewhere. It's not a place where you go in and do retouching where you're going to add eyelashes to somebody or you're going to manipulate them too much. There's a nice little feature in here with body AI, but as far as individual warping of features on somebody or some subject, that's not in here. This is something where you can very quickly and very easily make a beautiful photograph, but the manipulation that you're used to in Photoshop and other tools simply doesn't exist here. I think Luminar AI is a wonderful tool to use as a plugin with Lightroom and Photoshop. If you need to work with other plugins, this doesn't really host other plugins, but Photoshop and Lightroom do. So you can combine this with other tools that you like, but it's not the platform to host them. So that's just a quick look at who shouldn't buy Luminar AI. If you really need those features, if you're disappointed if it doesn't have them, then I'd recommend you don't buy it. All right, that's my quick list of who shouldn't buy Luminar AI. If this helped you out or you like it, please go ahead, click like. That tells YouTube we did something right, and maybe they'll share it with a few more people. I'll see you in the next video.